I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Mark Lichtenfeld, Chief Income Strategist at the Oxford Club. Thank you so much for being here online with me today. And thanks for having me, Charlotte. Of course. Now, because it's our first time speaking, I wondered if you could give me a brief overview of who you are and what you do at the Oxford Club. Sure. I'm the Chief Income Strategist, and my main duties are to find great income producing investments for our members, whether that's stocks, bonds, or any other way of producing income. Perfect. So unlike many of the experts that we speak to here, gold is not your main focus. Mm -hmm. I think the best place to start today is with why it's attracting your attention right now. Could you explain the opportunity you see in gold at the moment? Sure. So it's it's attracting my attention now because it's attracting everybody's attention, uh, meaning that it, it's it's what is important to a lot of investors right now. They're they're reading about it, they're learning about it, especially those who haven't uh, participated in investing in gold before. So uh, that's that's what caught my attention from an investment opportunity. I think what is important is that you know we have the the printing presses around the globe. Uh, just churning out dollars and yen and euros. Uh, interest rates are very low. So all of this uh, money printing is very inflationary. And traditionally, that is very positive for gold. We also have, uh, you know, stocks are now at all-time highs. And in my opinion, maybe getting a little bit frothy. So what I like about gold, and, and the reason I am writing about gold now, is it's a non-correlated asset to stocks. So regardless of whether you think stocks are expensive or cheap, you should always have some assets or some part of your portfolio in non-correlated assets, meaning you know, gold does not track with the S&P 500 or with bonds, it kind of does its own thing. So that way when some investments are going down, uh, you have other investments that are not necessarily tied to those stocks that are, or those other investments that are going lower. Okay, makes sense. So really, you're using the attention on gold right now to remind your readers to consider it as a portfolio diversifier that they should have. What has the reaction been from people you're interacting with, people who might not have been thinking about gold before? Are they interested? Yes, definitely. And, and especially because it is so much in the news these days. So like I said, it is attracting a lot of attention. So, you know, we have a few different camps. We have the people who love gold, who've been invested in gold for a long time. And they're, you know, basically saying it's about time you're getting on board. And then there are others who are learning about it for the first time and are interested uh, in, in, some, in some regards because of the speculative aspect of it. And, and it's had gone over 2000 and there are people now calling for 3000 and 10,000 and, and that excites people, but also people who are now learning about it and understanding what you know, we were just talking about, that it's this non-correlated asset that really deserves a place in, in every long-term portfolio. Okay, so when we talk about gold and adding it to somebody's portfolio, what type of gold are you thinking of? There's a lot of options that people can look at. In your opinion, what's the best way to do that? So I, I think bullion, uh, gold coins, the gold ETF really are the best ways, uh, the easiest ways, and, and the the simplest ways. You know, I know there are a lot of investors out there that love the gold mining stocks. Uh, to me, that's not a, a great way to play gold because that's a, you're kind of crossing the line between gold and stocks. So if you're investing in gold purely for the diversification, as we were just talking about, if you invest in the gold miners now, you're getting into stocks and certainly they will rise and fall along with the price of gold, but you're also going to have things like margins and CFOs leaving for personal reasons and all the things that can affect a company will affect the stock price as well. Okay, and just because you're mentioning the, the gold stocks, I think that we do have an audience that's quite interested in investing in gold stocks and particularly in the smaller companies that may be a little bit riskier, but you have a chance to make major gains. You, you have a strategy going back to what you do of income investing. And I wondered if you could make the case for that and perhaps how those two goals might fit together for somebody. Sure. So I have no problem with investors that want to speculate on, on especially the smaller companies, the ones that are exciting and, and a little more risky. But really, I, I would prefer to see investors do that once they have their long-term portfolios in good shape. 
And so to do that, I, I believe that a, a large position in dividend stocks and particularly companies that I call perpetual dividend raisers, these are companies that raise the dividend every single year. And the reason for that is just like gold keeps up with inflation, uh, dividend payers tend to not only keep up with inflation, but the, the companies that raise the dividend actually outpace inflation. So if we can get inflation, let's say back to three and a half percent, which is the historical average in the United States over the last hundred or so years, if you're investing in a company that raises the dividend 6% or 8% a year, even after taxes, you've increased your buying power after inflation. And I think that's really, really important for anyone who is approaching retirement or is retired. And then especially if you are reinvesting the dividend, if you're still in your wealth building phase of your investing life, then those raised dividends every single year really accelerate the compounding machine. So it's something I, I believe very, very strongly. And, and it's a strategy that has worked for decades and decades as far as uh, beating S&P 500, creating wealth, and doing it in a little bit more conservative way. Could you give an example of one of those stocks you're mentioning, one of those ones that raises its dividend consistently? Sure. So if you look at a company like AbbVie, they're a large pharmaceutical company. Uh, they're growing their earnings, growing cash flow and they've raised their dividend every year for a number of years. Another company not quite as exciting and, and not quite as much in the growth mode, but still growing the dividend every year is AT&T. And that's a company with a 7% yield and they've been raising their dividend for 36 years. And what I like about companies with these long track records of raising the dividend is they've really set expectations very high for their shareholders. So suddenly if a, if a company that's raised their dividend for 30, 40, 50 years, doesn't raise the dividend one year, they're gonna have a lot of explaining to do to their shareholders. And, and that really signals a very dramatic shift in the company's fundamentals. So, you know, that company that's raising the dividend every year is sending a message to Wall Street that they expect their earnings and cash flow to continue to grow uh, over the short and long term. Okay, now every investor, of course, is different, but I wondered if you could give me an idea of what an ideal portfolio would look like to you, not in terms of individual stocks, but in terms of the overall breakdown of assets. And maybe because you work with retired people, you could give a, a look at what that would look like when you're retired versus when you're before that point. Sure, well, you know, as you said, every investor is different. So I never like to give a, a broad, uh, portfolio allocation. When it comes to gold, though, the Oxford Club does believe 5% of your long-term portfolio should be in gold or precious metals. But as far as the, the stock and, and bond mix, that really depends on, on your tolerance for risk, what your short-term needs are for cash. So for example, I always tell anyone who needs cash within three years not to have that cash in the stock market because anything can happen uh, in the next three years. You know, five years, 10 years down the road, we generally know that markets go up and you should be okay. Um, but I do want to see investments in, you know, a variety of sectors, a variety of market caps. So not just the large caps, which are a little bit safer, but mid caps, small caps, um, just a wide variety of as many different sectors, market sizes, geographies as you can to really diversify. And, and that way, if something goes wrong in, in Europe, but uh, American stocks are still performing. You're covered if small caps outperform large caps. Uh, you know, that, that way it, it kind of, again, goes back to this non-correlated idea. There's always something working in your portfolio, the more diversified you can get. Okay, that's great. That sounds very balanced. As we finish up, are there any final words you would leave the audience with as we head into the rest of the year, the season of investing that we're in? Sure. Well, going back to gold, you know, one thing I would mention to people, especially since so many people are interested in speculating on gold, is just be careful that if you are speculating on gold, if, if you're getting into a short-term trade, know why you're getting into that trade. And if the trade doesn't work out, you know, there's an old saying, don't, let ever, don't ever let a trade become an investment. Uh, so you don't want to, if you think gold is, is going higher short-term and, and you plan on getting out, if, if it drops 5 or 10%, uh, and when it does drop 10%, don't say, well, I'm, I'm going to wait for it to bounce back. You know, have your, have your strategy, your entry and exit strategies thought out well in advance. Use stops if you can. And that way you're, you're not going to end up holding something that goes the wrong way for a long time. But vice versa, if you're planning on diversifying and investing in gold for the long term, 
Similarly, if it goes against you, don't just kind of rip up those plans and say, well, it went against me, I'm getting out. If, if you're a long-term investor, then plan to hold on for the long-term uh, in order to diversify your portfolio and don't, don't get shaken out of the market by a, a short-term bump in the road. Okay, well, thank you so much. I think that was some great words of advice. It was great to have you on. Oh, thanks again for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Mark Lichtenfeld with the Oxford Club.